Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Well, 2020 is nearly over, but during the course of the year I've reviewed an awful lot of distros. Not that many have left a lasting impression on me, but Ferran OS was one of those that did. And in fact, it's turned out to have been one of my most popular videos of the year. Well, with a recent release of Ferran based on the LTS version of Ubuntu, I thought it was time to dive back in and see if it still impresses. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. Um... Okay, let me first say before we go any further, last week's video was was a bit of a cock up. Um, I realised it after the first few comments started coming down the the line after the video was published, and people were going on about there was something wrong with the audio. It was just coming out of one of their earphones, and it suddenly struck me. I'd been messing about with the audio um, outputs or inputs or whatever you call it on, on OBS and I'd forgotten to tick the little button for for mono so apologies for that uh, this one should be fine um, right so le le let's get on with this video um, I had planned to do loads over the last uh, week and next week um, I applied for some annual leave and I thought right really time to to get on and get stuck into the channel and uh, get a bit more content produced. But like the whole of 2020, it's been a case of best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, work has suddenly got massively busy, and I've been asked to cancel most of my leave, so it looks like I'm only going to have Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, Christmas Day off. Ah, such is life. I can't complain in the current environment. I know I'm very lucky to have a job, so it is what it is. But let's get on to Ferran OS. Ferran OS is one of those distros that when you first see it, there's nothing kind of grabs you. You think, well, okay, it's based on Ubuntu. It was previously based on Linux Mint and Ubuntu, but but now it's based on Ubuntu. And um, you think, well, there's lots of Ubuntu respins out there. What is it about this one that makes it so special? And you know my views about forks of forks of forks. All year I haven't changed from Debian and Arch. Do you like the new hat, by the way? I've finally got an Arch hat. Um, but that doesn't mean, because, because I've stuck to the distros I like, that I don't appreciate other distros that have done a really good job. And when I first reviewed Ferrum back in April, what really impressed me was the attention to detail that uh, the developer or developers, I don't know if it's a one-man team or a whole team, but uh, what the developer, let's say, had put into making sure that everything just worked. It wasn't what I'd call a beginner distro, Although I think a beginner would find it great, but I think anybody who just wants a system that's configured out of the box would appreciate this, especially if they wanted a plasma desktop. And I think anybody who doesn't want a vanilla version of a desktop environment when they first start and would like something to just start them off and get them up and running really quickly would appreciate this distro. And I suppose I look at Ferrin in a similar way to how I look at Ubuntu and I look at Mint. I think both of those are superb distros. Beginners and experienced users alike can be comfortable in them, find them useful, get working straight away. I think the defining characteristic for me is really that Ubuntu, well, you go to Ubuntu if you want a GNOME desktop, certainly. And I tend to think that Ubuntu's Mate desktop is one of the best that's been implemented. You want a Cinnamon desktop? Well, go straight away for, for Linux Mint. Their Mate desktop's pretty good as well. 
But if you want a plasma desktop, this is where Ferron really stands out for me. Um, it's made enough customizations to a standard plasma desktop to not be just another roll your own distro with a few theme changes. It, it, it's much more than that. And so when it came to a new release, which, which happened last month, I think it was, uh, it took a while to actually get there, but it's now tracking the LTS version of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 20.04. And uh, so it's got long-term support for years to come. And I thought it was worth another look. There's lots of people will say, well, the problem with Ferron is that it's essentially a one man or a, at least a very small distro. So you haven't got the big company support there behind you. And I would agree on the face of it, but I don't think you should have that as a hard and fast rule. I mean, look at Slackware, um, the distro that's historically been around uh, longer than any others and is still active. And that's essentially a one-man distro. Uh, Patrick Volderking, yes, he has developers and people around him that helps, but that's been going for over 25 years. So there's no reason to think that Ferron couldn't have the same legs. So I wouldn't dismiss the fact that it's, it's a small distro out of hand. And I'll be honest, it's a British distro. And for me, yeah, it, it's part of the time to wave the flag of course it is uh, it's nice to see a british distro there don't seem to be a huge amount out there uh, there are some but when something comes along that is a british distro obviously I'm, I'm going to support it if i think it's worth it so i'm going to have a look at this and we'll go to the web page in a minute the ferron os web page to see what the latest release is all about what i will say before we go any further is that this review is in VirtualBox, and, and when you're using a virtual machine, yeah, it comes with its own difficulties. And one of the difficulties I noticed when playing back the video uh, that I did the review on is VirtualBox is struggling to keep up with uh, all of the effects, the graphical effects. So you see a bit of screen tearing. Please, th there wasn't much I could do about that. Don't judge uh, Ferron OS based on the fact that you're getting screen tearing in VirtualBox. I should have, with hindsight, turned off the effects. I didn't, so my fault. I'll hold my hands up. So before we get any further, let's go to the Ferron OS webpage, see what it's all about. So you should be able to see the uh, the Ferron OS webpage there. Um, so meet the all new Ferron OS, redefined and better than ever. That that that's the claim. And um, yeah, why not? It was pretty good to start off with. I was always impressed. And although the beta was out for a while, it's taken the developer a while to actually release this version based on the LTS uh, release of Ubuntu. Um, why not? If it takes time to make sure it's stable and it works properly, all good. And, uh, yeah, they describe it as a suedo rolling release, which means that not all of the operating system rolls frequently, just a certain chunk of the available applications. So your main repo in Ferron is the Ubuntu LTS repo. But Ferron also has his own repo in there from GitLab. And presumably that's what he means, that the the applications that will roll more frequently are the ones that he compiles himself. So, what have we got? Uh, easy to use desktop based on Plasma. There used to be a classic version based on uh, Cinnamon. That's now gone. So, the Plasma desktop is what we're looking for. Designed to be nin nimble and responsive, etc., etc., and what I was surprised about the last time was all the little tools and bits and pieces that had been included in the, in the distro and just made it very, I don't know, easy to use. Everything just worked. At least that's what I found. Now, one of the things that you may ask is, well, <laughs> isn't it just another Ubuntu respin? And, and this is a question that the devs have already uh, answered here. And uh, technically they're saying, yes, it is. 
However, it isn't just your average plasma. It isn't Kubuntu, for instance. Uh, I, I did review Kubuntu uh, quite a while ago, and I have to say I was probably less impressed with Kubuntu than I've been with any other Ubuntu-based distro. Uh, it just didn't seem to have anything, uh, for me anyway, for me, uh, that was worth uh, going to. So yes, it has custom theming, but it's not just about theming. In fact, I'm not going to read all of these things out, but there's been lots of tweaks and bits and pieces to make it different. And Theranos uh, devs have even patched the default Plasma experience. So it's just slightly different. I mean, it even has Nemo as its default file manager. You either like Nemo or you don't, but hey, you know, it is what it is. So it's its own thing in many ways. It is just, it is not just a straight respin of Ubuntu. And the Ferran dev uh, has made some choices uh, to start people off, such as the default browser is Vivaldi, which I personally think is a rather strange choice. I've not used Vivaldi, so I'm not qualified really to say whether that's good or bad. But it's almost irrelevant because you can change your browser in no time at all. In fact, uh, Ferrin actually provides a tool for doing that. So, um, yeah, we have got some uh, Mint applications still in there, although the Linux Mint repos are no longer there, including the Mint Update Manager, Timeshift, and the Mint Driver Manager. So he seems to have kept what he considers to be the best from Mint, but he, he's followed Ubuntu more closely this time. And I suppose in many ways that makes sense as far as stability is concerned, that its core is now based on an LTS release. Anyway, we're, without further ado... Let's go and have a look at it. Okay, so here we are at the Ferran OS login screen. Looks to me like LightDM using the Slick Greeter. Could be wrong, but that's what it seems like. Anyway, we have a very, very clean login screen. So let's get in and have a look at what it's all about. Just to let you know, I have logged in already. I ran all the updates and... Yeah, it, it's rebooted, essentially, so let's see where we're up to. We can see the, the little welcome dialog in the bottom right-hand corner, which seems to take a few seconds to just sort itself out. And then we get to this welcome screen. Now, what I would say is I haven't put you through the installation here because you've all seen the installation before. But it's a two-part installation, so you go through a next, next, next process, and it does the initial installation of all the files, sends them to the hard drive. Then when you reboot, uh, you set up your locale and your username, and then eventually it gets to Ferran OS. And one of the first things it did was it prompted me by saying, right, it looks like you're using this on VirtualBox. Would you like to install... Uh, drivers for VirtualBox. So, so I clicked yes and all good. Having said that, it did, right from the get-go, boot into a full HD screen, even just using the ISO. So so that's all good. So we get to this, this welcome screen. Um, I noticed one thing here. We, we used to have a link on the old one to a manual that no longer seems to be there, but let's see where introduction gets us to. Um, an operating system designed with love, and it tells us all about it, what it's running, etc., etc., what its objectives are, that it's using Plasma, that it's based on Ubuntu, um, it comes with plenty of applications, etc., etc. Okay, so nothing stunning there as such. Let's hit getting started. Aha, and there's the user guide. Right, so the user guide is still there. Let's just click on uh, this and see where it takes us. So Vivaldi is launching, and uh, hopefully we're, yeah, we're going to get to the user guide that we were used to seeing before. 
I think this is really, really a strong feature of any distro. And you've got links here on... Uh, where Where is this actually put? Is this a custom website or is it just using a portal? I'm not exactly sure, but anyway. So we've got everything we need to know here about downloading the operating system, preparing for installation, booting, getting started, hardware, using, installing applications. It's pretty thorough. Okay, so I like that. I think that's that's a really strong point right from the word go. You can relaunch a tour, and if we do that, what happens? Let's have a look. Right, so this is the screen you get right from the word go. I'd obviously done this already um, when I first booted into it, and yes, I got this uh, option to install guest editions, or if you're using VMware, you can do it that way. Offers you the opportunity to transfer your files to Ferran. That's nice and straightforward or get third-party codecs. Do you know, let's just do that. Let's just click, yes, install third-party codecs and see how long this takes. Hopefully not long. We'll come back in a second once it's done. And that didn't take long at all, so presumably that's all now done and we can play all sorts of media formats. We then have the option to play around with our desktop layout. Now, I'm looking at this layout and comparing it to what we had last time. If I'm honest, I'm not the greatest fan of the wallpaper here, but I'm not going to make any sort of judgment about a distro based on the wallpaper choice. Um, it's neither here nor there. But what I have noticed is the icons on the, the plasma panel down here are in the centre as opposed to being on the left. So... I have an option here. This is known as the Ferran OS default setting, or I could go to, well, a couple of things, but let me see if I can click onto the familiar layout. And I'm hoping that's going to bring me back to the standard layout that I would use if I was installing this. And yes, it has. It shifted all the icons to the center. Okay, so that's nice and easy. It then points to where the desktop menu is. Okay. Window management, the system tray, using desktop search, start typing while you're on your desktop with no windows. So let me just start typing. Ah, there we go. Took a little while to start, but it starts. And of course, you can access that from Alt F2 as well. Use the store. Okay, so loads of free software in the store, apparently. Choose your theme, the default, the light, or the dark. So let's click on that and see what it looks like. Okay, not a huge difference at the moment. Let's open up a file manager to, to see what it looks like. And that was the default. Okay, what about the dark? That would be my choice. Let's stick with that. Then we go on to next. Wow, you can even apply an accent color. I'm just going to leave it at default for the time being. Pair your Ferrum machine with your Android device. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's using KDE Connect. So you just click a configure KDE Connect button to, to get started. Reduce eye strain. Okay, great. All done. Right, I really like the fact that a new user is given the opportunity to do all the basic bits of configuration right from the word go. And then we come back to this main welcome screen. So we looked at the introduction, we looked at getting started, which took us, well, basically to here, where we've got links to all sorts of things. Uh, so the user guide, you can relaunch the tour, which we've just done. Recommendations. Okay, so recommendations for bits and pieces of software. Uh, customization. Okay, so we can have a look at the global theme. Let's just open up that and see what that's about. Right, okay, so we've got a fair few options here. Fer and banana, I think not. I'm not a fan of yellow, generally speaking, but... Wow, you, you, you've you got plenty of choice here uh, to pick your theme. I think, right, we're on Ferran OS Dark at the moment. What else is here? 
system settings. So presumably if I click on that, it will open up the KDE settings or the plasma settings, should I say. And that's exactly what it does. Okay, so all good. What else is here? Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Okay, great. Updates and extra. Let's just click that. So we've got the Ubuntu manager. We've got restricted extras here. Restricted extras are installed, which would, of course, been the additional codex. I did an update yesterday, so I'm not going to do another one. Let's have a look at drivers. So duh, 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 where are we up to? So there's a user guide for the driver manager. Graphics. Okay, let's open the driver manager and see where we get to. We get prompted to put in our password. It's updating the cache. It should already have the VirtualBox drivers installed here, so we'll just have a look and see. Apparently, no proprietary drivers are in use. That surprised me. I would have expected to have seen the VirtualBox ones there, but hey-ho, let's just go back. Um, language and import system specifications. Okay, so a nice little link to some general information. So I quite like these screens. I think it just makes it very easy. I don't think for, for one minute that this should be described as a new user distro. It's Plasma. It's based on Ubuntu. It's fine for anybody who wants a pre-configured Plasma desktop. If a new user happens to choose this as their first distro, I don't think they'll be disappointed. I think they will become very comfortable. And of course, we have at the bottom of this welcome screen the install software. So initially, flat packs are included in the Ferran store, I believe, but not Snap applications. And if you try and click on Snap, it tells you it's not installed, but if you'd like to install it, it's no problem. So if you like Ubuntu, but you're not overly keen on using Snap packages, this could be for you. Now, I know we've been clicking around here, so it, it, it's perhaps not a completely fair thing to look at, but let's open system maintenance and let's see what RAM the system's actually using. So it's actually checking our system for issues, which I think is pretty good. Right, and it's telling us straight away that we're missing the British language pack, so we can install that straight away. But let's have a look at system information. Okay, options. I actually thought this was like a system monitor, but it's clearly not. Okay, but that's good. That just takes us to the update manager. Is there a system monitor here? Oh. Um, I'm presuming there will be. I don't know what it's called. Du -du 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 -du. System monitor, case syscard. Let's have a quick look. So the system load, what have we got? 0.81 of a gig. Now, I've been messing about opening and shutting things up, so that's going to drive RAM up. Uh, I would probably expect this to be around half a gig to start off with, maybe slightly less, but it's not bad. I mean, this is a full-blown desktop, and Plasma has really, really kind of set themselves a high bar to, to get resource usage down to reasonable levels, and I think they've done pretty well. So, okay, so we can see what we can see. The welcome screen, I think, is great. Let's just do a right-click. And let's have a look. I, I do like the transparency, by the way, on this right-click desktop. Uh, let's have a look at configure desktop and wallpaper to see what options we have. And I'm going to open this up. I said I'm not a huge fan of uh, the default wallpaper, but as you can see, there's actually quite a variety of different ones that we can actually use. Um, I'm not quite sure which one I would necessarily go with. Um, hmm, let's just make this smaller so I can see what they look like. Quite like that, I must admit. Uh, but let's pick something uh, a little bit more generic, perhaps. 
No, there we are. Snowy Road. Okay. Right. I like that. I really do like that. I can see now very clearly that the bottom panel is transparent, which is great. There's a link there to the desktop layout, which is going to give us the option to choose whichever layout we want. They're all there. That's great. The global theme shortcut is there. We can go back to our welcome screen from there. All good. Let's have a quick look in the menu to see what we've got here. Um, I don't know that I like this menu that much, uh, and I'll tell you why. It looks a bit Windows 10-ish to me. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not my favourite feature, if I'm honest. I don't know what sort of menu they're using. Um, let me just shut this down and see if we can change our menu. Du -du 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 -du. Configure tiled menu or show alternatives. Let's have a look at the show alternatives menu. So it's using the tiled menu. I know that last time it used the simple menu and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use a menu that looks like Windows 10. So hopefully that is going to be a bit more to my liking. And yes, it is. That's nearer to what I've been expecting. Now I'm using this on a virtual machine. Um, and I'm using it on my laptop to do this. Um, it does still feel snappy, but perhaps not quite as snappy as it did on the previous version. But nevertheless, you know, remember this is in a virtual machine, so it is what it is. Let's have a quick look through the menu. So graphics, we've got Critter there, Ocular, the document reader, photos, a document scanner. Um, we don't appear to have the GIMP installed from the get-go, but it's easy enough to sort that. We then have the internet section. I see KDE Connect is already installed. Ramina and Geary. Okay, Geary's great for email. And Vivaldi is installed as the default browser here. I think that's a rather strange choice, but nevertheless, what you can see there is a little menu item that... Uh, is labelled Internet Browser, and it gives you a whole range of browsers that you can install just with one click. Even Microsoft Edge, goodness knows why you'd want to install that, but even Microsoft Edge is coming soon, apparently. So what have you got? You've got Chrome, Chromium, Mozilla Firefox, Brave, Opera, Waterfox, Falcon, and the GNOME web uh, browser. So... Again, it's one of those nice features where you just open it up and click on what you want. This is what I found last time with uh, with Ferran, that it was attention to detail and just trying to make things easier for people. What about multimedia? Well, we have Cheese for your webcam, VLC as your media player. VLC has its detractors, but I have to say it's the default media player that I use it just plays everything, and, and I'm very comfortable with it. Office, we have all of the LibreOffice suite there. Science and Maths, where we've got LibreOffice Math. Then all of your settings. Um, we've obviously got the Plasma settings there. Um, but let's have a look at the firewall. I know it has a little uh, Ferron bird on the front, but I think this is going to be GUFW with UFW running underneath. And yes, it is. As normal with just about every distro that I've tried, your firewall doesn't come enabled, but all you have to do is click on this button. I understand why the firewall doesn't come in as enabled, because it can block services to make life harder. Um, having said that, you know, I, I, I still feel that perhaps... Distro should configure a firewall, especially for new users, and you've always got the option to turn it off should you wish. Uh, you've got disks there, Synaptic Package Manager, which is great to see, uh, Theme Colors, the Update Manager. You've got a, a Wacom tablet configuration tool there. I haven't used a Wacom tablet for ages, but it's good to see that there. 
and there you can configure your login window which is brilliant let's open up synaptic if you're using a debian based system synaptic is the must-have as far as i'm concerned i'm not a great fan of stores personally i would always rather go for synaptic and i just want to have a look at the repositories and see what we've got here and we are configured to use Ferran OS's own repository, which is a GitLab repository, and uh, the UK Ubuntu Mirror. Any PPAs? Uh, yeah, there does appear to be a couple of PPAs here, um, although they're all both essentially the same. One's source and one's binaries, and it just links straight to uh, the Ubuntu driver PPA. Additional repositories? So there's Google, Vivaldi, and Wine HQ there. Okay, so it's not overloaded with additional repositories. It's essentially Ubuntu with a little bit of Ferran stuff thrown in and then a few additional repositories just to make life easier. But good to see that we've got uh, Synaptic there by default. Anything else that I need to point out here? Um Yes, yeah, so moving down to system. Right, so we've got our information center. Console is our default terminal. Again, the login window. S oops, software sources. Well, we've had a look at them anyway. I think all we need to do, oh, there's time shift. All we need to do, really do now is just go to the utilities menu and see if there's anything unusual there, knowing it all looks pretty much standard is to open up the Ferran software store. So let's open that up. Again, a little bit of a lag here. Not quite as snappy as I remember. I've, I've given this six gig of RAM, so it's uh, it's not as if it hasn't got much RAM to work with. There should be more than enough, but here we have it. And uh, you have a link to all of your standard standard packages. So this is gonna be mainly flat packs, I would imagine. But a combination of deb files if a flat pack isn't installed. If you want to install snaps, you have the option on that welcome screen, but they are not installed by default. Okay, so that's Ferran OS. It's a pretty impressive distro. Um, it's pretty much on the face of it, very similar to what it was like when I first looked at it. I'm no less impressed. Let's go and have a chat. So that's Ferran OS. Um, I've come away from this um, after having done so many different reviews over the course of the year. And when I first, first did the review, I hadn't even done a year of the channel. And I was impressed from the get-go. And I wasn't expecting to be impressed because Plasma had never really been my favorite desktop environment. But Ferrum was was the distro that forced me to look at it again. And uh, I've got a lot more respect for, for the environment these days. What do I think of the new version? Well, I think it's still a cracking distro. It felt a little, just a tad more sluggish to me than uh, the first time. I have a tendency to, th to think that that's probably because of the effects. And you saw the fact that VirtualBox was struggling with those effects. But generally speaking, I mean, the experience was good. It was snappy. I like the tools. I like the easy way it is to theme a distro. And, you, you know, there's set layouts there and you, you can just pick which you want. And then it gives you a base to go on and do more. Um, it's solid. And I think if you want an Ubuntu-based distro and you want a Plasma desktop, this could be the one for you. Um, I don't really have anything negative to say about this. I think that the, the devs have done great work getting it up to a point where they can now link it to the LTS version of Ubuntu. And I hope it continues for many years. Whether this one will, will continue to be as popular as the last version, I don't know. I hope so. But the Linux world, as you know, is a bit of a moving target. <laughs> Things are changing constantly. New distros are being released. So just keeping up with that is a job in itself. 
Right, okay, guys. So, as I said, uh, there's going to be a change to what I'd hope to do over this coming Christmas period, um, simply because my, my leave has pretty much been wiped out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not bitter about that. It's just one of those things that happens, and I'll catch up hopefully in January. Uh, lots to do at the moment, and so it is what it is. Um, one of the things that I had planned to do was... Uh, would you believe it? I was going to look at um, perhaps a Gen 2 install with the help of Sergey. Um, that's going to have to just be put off for the time being. I just haven't got the time to do it. But I will do it at some point in the future. I promise. Will there be a, a, another live distro, uh, another uh, live uh, video? It really depends how, how this week pans out. If I get time to do something, I will try and do... Um, a live show before Christmas. I can't currently guarantee it though because I'm not sure how my calendar is going to pan out for the next few days. But certainly, uh, it's one of the things that I, I've got on the cards. Next weekend, there obviously won't be a distro because uh, won't be a, a video because it's Christmas. Um, and I hope all of you have a great Christmas. I mean. Let's face it, we need it after this year, don't we? I mean, what a dreadful year it's been overall. What's coming up? Um, Tyler from Tyler's Tech has asked me to uh, join him again for another one of his podcasts. We haven't got a date for that, but I'm looking forward to that. So that's coming up shortly as well. But in the meantime, I'd just like to say, as always, come and join me on Library. Come and join the Facebook group. And uh, if I can just drag it over, um, I'd like to thank all my Patreons. Thanks so much for supporting me this year, guys. Uh, so that's Devon, Corbinian, Robert, Gary, Aristoteles, Stormpix, Stephen, Mike, David, Entropy UK, Richard, Ty, Philip, Forrest, Scott, and Patrick. Thank you, guys. Your support has been really welcome. And uh, it's helped a lot in getting this new studio set up. So I'll hopefully see you during the week. If I don't, have a great Christmas and I'll see you well, I'll see you after that. Cheers guys. <laughs>